Hello, it's Nikki and welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad so many of you are loving the interviews and thank you so much for sharing, rating and reviewing. I so appreciate it. Anyway, I wanted to continue the conversation of success. So often we hear the extremes, don't we, of rags to riches, homeless to billionaire, sleeping on a random sofa to a blinged up palace. But what about the in-between bits? I know personally I have had many. How do you get from A to Z? But also, how do you get from A to B or F to M? In these mini episodes, I want to provide questions to ponder, ideas that might spark a brainstorm, or raise topics that might be a little bit uncomfortable in the moment, but they will support you to go to the next level of your business. As always, please come over to social media at Nikki Raby, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and breakthroughs. Hello, it's Nikki, and welcome to a brand new episode. Today, I want to have a bit of a reality check. The real life versus the dream life. Often at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the month, we can start to set those resolutions, those big goals of what we want to achieve this year and all the big things. But what if real life is quite tricky to navigate? What if your current reality doesn't necessarily allow you the time and the space and the sense or the creativity to actually get to where you want to get to. Now at the weekend I announced on Instagram, if you follow me there, if you don't, it's at Nikki Raby, that I am pregnant with my second baby. Very exciting, very grateful, very happy. That all goes without saying. However, Since the beginning of December, I have been so sick. I've had all the symptoms. There have been days where I've just felt really terrible from about three o'clock in the afternoon. And the only thing that I could do is go to bed. Now, I am not that person in normal life. I have lots of energy. There's stuff I want to do. I like being part of things. But for whatever reason, this baby has been like, no, 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 no. We are switching off. We are not being part of the world. And no matter how much I thought in a positive way, or I considered a green juice or going to the gym, both of which are only just starting to come into the mix again, I I couldn't do anything. I literally just had to surrender to it to give into it. And I felt like I really wanted to talk about this today because so many of my clients, even though they have big goals and big dreams and changes and things that they want to do, which is also exciting, the way in which I work is very holistic. So they may have young kids who are not sleeping through the night. They may have parents who are perhaps going through some illness or maybe they need to be taken for chemo or whatever it might be, like real life stuff. We know that lots of this stuff happens to people. Maybe my clients are having some anxiety or mental health issues. Maybe they have a partner that has suddenly lost their job and they're having to take a lot of the reins and take that responsibility. I never underestimate that life, real life, is going on underneath. And I wanted to give you some tools that were going to really help you today, especially if you're having a really tricky time. I know lots of people are have maybe not started the year financially in a way that they wanted to. I know I certainly haven't done all of the things that I thought I would be doing in January because I was like, it will be fine it really wasn't. And this is kind of the opposite that I'm hearing is that quite often with marketing materials, especially with business development or life coaching or self-development, any of those kind of things, often the story that people share is I was nothing, I was poor, I just lost everything and now I found my dream life. And what I find quite often is people are not sharing that in-between moment. They are not revealing that sometimes things are really hard. And actually, 
it can be quite challenging to do all of the things. And if you're triggered by any of that sort of stuff, if you're just sick of seeing people on beaches or like singing as they go into their new hotel room, you know those people who are like, oh, it looks so great, we're having such a great time. It can become quite irritating when you're not feeling like that is your reality at the moment. And I know, I know you, I know you want to keep the vibes high. I know sometimes you could be like, no, that's an inspiration. That is like helping me move forward. But sometimes it doesn't and you just need to turn it off. Anyway, so today I'm going to be sharing 10 things that hopefully will help you if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling pulled in all directions, If suddenly something has happened in your life that maybe you weren't expecting and you've had to pivot, as Ross from Friends says, I just want you to know that you're not alone. And it's always that, you know, I want us all to be in this together. And even though sometimes it can feel a little bit exposing sharing things or I kind of really had to get the tone of the post right to say, I haven't been feeling well, but now I am. But like, it's a really tricky thing to navigate because we all still need to generate income. We still need to be professional and all of those good things. But I always work from that standpoint of bringing that human experience as well. So number one, when life goes in an unexpected way, or suddenly you're flawed, or suddenly things have to change or stop, or figure themselves out in a different way. Number one is to keep things simple, to lose perfection. Now, when I was in bed and throwing up and things like that, I was keeping things very simple with my son. I was staying close to home. We were doing things that maybe we were spending much more time at home rather than going into London and having a great time and going all these adventures. And of course, you can feel like you're not doing all of the things. You can feel like, I don't know, guilt comes out, like, oh, I'm not doing this, or I've let my friends down, or I missed that thing, or I was late with that birthday present. But you know what? Just keep things really simple wherever you can. If you need to say no, if you need to say not right now, or I'm going through some stuff, the people who are in your corner will understand. And if they don't, maybe they're not in your corner. Number two, this too shall pass. When you are in these things, when you're in grief or sickness or illness or distress or confusion, sometimes you can feel like you're never going to feel like you again. That everything is up for debate, that you feel like you have to change everything because you've got lost along the way. However, I want to tell you the difference from last week to this week. Already, I'm starting to eat more. I had some acupuncture yesterday. I even did a bit of exercise this morning. I know, insane. But just remembering this too shall pass. I know it can be really tempting when you're in it to feel completely boxed in by this situation. But there will become a day where things feel easier and smoother and more straightforward, I promise. Even if it's not quite going back to where it was before, or even if you're in a situation where you just don't really know how you're going to come out of it, it will pass and there will be something that will come out of this, I'm pretty sure. Number three, manage your surroundings and your environment. I touched on this slightly. So I had to be really careful with my social media use and like turn off notifications, mute people and just take really good care of what I had in my world. So sometimes that can be not sharing things with friends and family because they'll scaremonger you. And the amount of people who've said like, and it happened when I was pregnant the first time, like, is that it then? Have you given up on your career? Have you given up on your dreams? Are you going to move out of London? Are you going to do this, this and this? And 
for me, I have to be really bold because sometimes you can get caught up and go, oh, maybe I should give this up. Maybe I should move out of London. Maybe I should buy a horse. You know, I'm not buying a horse, but these crazy things that you feel like you should do because other people put the willies up you effectively. So really making sure that you're managing your surroundings. And I've had that with a couple of people like, are you going to move house for more space? And now my line is no. No we're keeping things simple at the moment. I'm not going to move house when I'm heavily pregnant. We're keeping things easy and simple, but we may move in the future. So really finding those lines that you can keep coming back to is going to be really helpful. Number four, this is not the time to reinvent the wheel. So I had big plans for January of stuff I was going to launch and do, but I just couldn't do it. I physically couldn't do it. There was too much going on. It was enough to do the basics of um, just running my business, really. And so by not reinventing the wheel and just sticking to what I knew, it immediately took the pressure off. And that was a bit of a weird internal shift for me because it is that thing of like, oh, but I oh, I don't like saying that I'm going to do something and then not but when it was me and I was doing that, then it's just I'm the only person that I need to kind of look after in this situation. And nobody's paying that much attention anyway. So, um, yeah, don't reinvent the wheel. Don't feel like you have to change everything. Keep things simple where you can and just stick to what you know. Number five, be bold with your boundaries, ask for money. And this, again, whether you're in a tricky situation or not, please ask for money. Please be bold about your expectations and what you need and what the transaction is going to look like. I've had several messages this month like, hey, Nikki, we would love you to come and do this, this and this. We think you would be perfect. It would be great. And as I'm replying to this email from my bed, I have to know that this situation that I'm so perfect for is going to be paid. Because frankly, if I'm not getting paid, I'm not leaving my bed, I'm not leaving my house. And sometimes, especially with big corporations, you have to be bold. And I can't reiterate that, em that enough. You have to say, this is a paid service. This is what I charge. These are my contractual agreements. You have to ask for the money. And sometimes being bold and putting a date on things, saying when you want to be paid, is going to keep everything cooking and moving and shaking. When I'm worried about money, when I'm chasing invoices where work feels really hard and complicated and tricky, I'm not doing my best work and I'm certainly not resting at night. I'm kind of awake and thinking about all the things and all the rest of it. So wherever you can, be bold with your boundaries and also be bold with yourself. Make sure that you are managing your own expectations as well. Make sure you're setting out clear deliverables of what things will look like. It will save you a lot of time in the long run. Number six, self-care. Goes without saying, whatever makes you feel good, do it. Going to bed at seven, do it. Baths in the middle of the day while your toddler dangles things at you, do it. More telly for your toddler, absolutely. Eating crisps so you don't throw up on the bus, do all of the things. It's really about mixing up that self-care and it's not just in a kind of beautifying way of how all the fancy adverts show us. It is about that self-care that is going to make you feel good in the moment. So really make it a priority. Even if it's something that you're like, oh no, it's fine usually. Be instinctive, listen to your body, know what you need and be willing to ask for it. And sometimes we need to spell these things out to our partners. I mean, my partner has seen me being pregnant before, so he understands like I'm just out of action. It's it's a no from me. It's a no from me, mate. It, like it, I can't do all the things. So he recognizes that. But sometimes I think people get shocked, especially if you're in grief, they still want you to kind of carry on as normal or whatever the situation might be. So be bold with what you need and your requirements. 
Number seven, the easy wins, the follow-ups, the people who said that they wanted to work with you and they have worked with you previously, follow up with them, see how they're doing. This doesn't have to be in a sleazy, salesy way, but sometimes give people that nudge. And sometimes if you need to do discounts or you need to do offers or any of those things just to get the money moving and shaking, Be open to it. I know some people don't like doing discounts. I know that there's all kinds of things that are kicking around this. But sometimes you just need to get the money moving and shaking and all the rest of it. And having sold a lot of online courses now, I know so many people who will have said, oh, I would have never have done that. Or like, thanks so much for giving me the nudge. I needed that discount in order to make the purchase. So go for those easy wins. Again, don't feel like you have to spend all your time pitching to those people who don't know you and don't understand your work. Go for those easy wins. It will really help you to get things flowing again. Number eight, this situation doesn't define you or maybe it will. So when you're in the mix of that hard time, the temptation can be to doubt everything, to go down that self-sabotage route of like, oh, why can't I do it? Why am I not looking like a glowy pregnant woman? Everybody else finds this easy. But you know what? These things show up in all kinds of different ways. And certainly as well, if you've experienced grief along the way, sometimes people go, well, she'll be sad for about a month and then she'll be absolutely fine. But we know with grief, like it pops up to say hello when you're least expecting it. So when you're in that situation, be careful to do all of those things such as manage your expectations and all of that sort of stuff but making sure that it doesn't define you that you don't go down a rabbit warren of self-doubt it's okay not to be okay and you know what when you feel these human experiences when tough stuff happens it may become shareable in the future it may become part of your story it may be your fork in the road it makes you more human I know that I'm craving this more than ever. I'm craving that human connection with people and to really feel like I'm understood and to have that empathy and all that stuff. So um, yeah, be really careful, be really mindful and manage your own expectations as well. Number nine, when you have time and space and you feel up to things, do it batch it, use that time really effectively. Sometimes as well, if you're going through stuff, people want to chat on the phone or maybe they have concern and all the rest of it. So that time and space where actually you do feel good, take it, use it, optimize it, all that good stuff, it will be great. And number 10, even though you might be in depths of trickiness or you're feeling physically, um, debilitated, mentally not on point, any of those things, try and notice the great things wherever you can. I know that's hard. I don't want to sound trite or anything like that because sometimes when you're in that headspace, and I'm not saying that I felt like this in this pregnancy, but there have been times in my life where I've just felt like really hopeless, really low, really terrible. But if wherever you can, you can look up and notice some great things, even if it's just one or two things every single day, um, it can sometimes just shift your perspective. So those are my 10 things. Let me know what works for you. Again, I'm really pleased about my pregnancy. I'm not saying this to kind of, um, I know that some people have have found like conceiving and things like that very difficult. So I'm saying this uh, with all of that understanding as well. And if you've listened for a while, you will know this very much. All right, have a lovely week. Let me know what you think. Please share with somebody who might find it useful and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening as always. If you do want to rate and review and subscribe over on iTunes or even share it with a friend, I would love it. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to find out more about me and how we can work together, please go to NikkiRaby.com or connect with me across social media at Nikki Raby. I'll see you soon. Bye.